Welcome everyone and thank you so much for listening in. Today we're going to talk about reducing stress through strengthening your relationship with money. But before we do, as a reminder, it's an educational show and should not be considered as personal financial advice. Full disclosure information is available at ototnow.com. Now let's get started. So to reduce stress, we need to have more awareness and more education of the purpose of money. And that's uh, several concepts need to kind of be flushed out here that aren't really taught in schools. There's no like formal process. These are things that I've come to learn as a money manager over time, which I didn't necessarily know even a few years back before I got into the financial business. So I've been a lifelong investor, but I didn't really fully understand some of these concepts. So that's what I'm going to go through with you today. We're going to talk about what is wealth. We're going to talk about what is money, which is, there's a key difference there. We're going to talk about how we use money. We're going to talk about how to make money. We're going to talk about investing, which is how money makes money. And then kind of conclude it all with what true wealth really is. And only by flushing out all these concepts can we really uh, reduce our stress in our life by understanding the financial, financial aspects of all of this stuff. So let's talk about what is wealth. You know from a former episode that I consider true wealth to be a combination of three things, self-worth, network, and net worth. So to go over those individually, the first of all, and they're almost like a, you know, a, a circle with, with like the target where self-worth is at the middle, uh, you have to be right with yourself. And you do have to put yourself first and never stop working on you. Now, I'm a little bit sensitive to this because I came out of the military and there's a large number of suicides in the military. So that's why I say you have to get right with yourself. And if you're not right there, then you need to reach out for help because no, no amount of money is going to make you right if you haven't uh, kind of gotten yourself squared away. And we're all human and we're all vulnerable to this, even if you think you aren't, you are. Um, so just make sure that you're okay with you first. And if you're not, do what it takes to get there, ask for help, put yourself out there, use your network and your net worth as resources to get yourself to get your self worth uh, squared away. And then the second one, next circle off of that is your network, which you can think of this as, as your family and your close set of friends. And that's kind of your primary network. And then your secondary network are, you know, work associates and your second, you know, ring of friends, if you will. And you know, people always say that you become just like those you surround yourself with, so you better choose wisely. And, and I like that. I, I think that's true. It's that core group of family and friends that kind of keeps you straight and keeps making you a better version of yourself uh, over time. And you'll, as you've already seen in life, some friends get to come into that circle and stay. Some friends do not get to stay in that circle uh, over time, and you kind of move on. So manage you know your self-worth first and then your network uh, secondly and then the last part of wealth is actually the money part and that's your net worth and that's really the sum total of all financial resources at your disposal which okay let's just think you know operational cash flow is kind of the money you have on hand and that you kind of spend every day but it includes you know real estate you own and of course your portfolio and if you have insurance policies in place those also have worth so it's kind of the sum total of all of that is the last piece that makes up the wealth but there's a definite difference between wealth and money so let's talk about money next the best definition I've ever heard of money is from Cullen Roche, who's a financial commentator as well as a fellow wealth manager, who's written extensively on this. And he said, money is a social construct. And I really like that. So when you think of it, things become money and can act as money because we as society accept them as money. So when you think you know, forms of money as cash and coins, sure, uh, but now it's not not really. I mean, most of the transactions don't involve cash or coins. They involve basically an electronic ledger, uh, which if you go charge something with a credit card and you, you take the asset, whatever it is you're buying, and that becomes a liability on your credit card bill. And no money ever changed hands. It's just an electronic ledger. So, so many transactions are like that now through automatic bill paying, debiture, debiture, uh, bank account. And then of course it credits your, 
your credit card account that you have on file with, with another organization there. So when you really think of all the tra transactions out there, most money is simply electronic. So that kind of challenges the thought of it just being cash and coins. Now you have different denominations. You have, you know, euros and pesos and dinars and kronars and you know, all kinds of different currencies around the world. But when you think about those are currencies and currencies can exchange with each other at whatever exchange rate that that is. And generally that is also electronic. So there's currencies and then the overall concept of money. So it kind of makes me think when Bitcoin came out, as long as all of the other electronic currencies out there and are these forms of money and well, traditionally, yes. Any, if it's socially accepted as money, then it can become money. Uh, if you think of, you know, before we had money, everybody was trading and you know, if you're a farmer and you made your, you know, you had bread to offer everybody and that you made uh, from your farm and we would you know, trade things back and forth so everybody could get everything. Well, obviously money made that easier because now you could just use money, you know, get money for whatever you produce and then use your money to get whatever you need. So if Bitcoin and others out there are widely accepted, then sure, they can be considered money as well. Now, Bitcoin's been around for a few years now and it's still here, so therefore it is accepted to some extent. Uh, you can argue whether it's an investment or not. I would say not, I don't consider dollars investments, but you, you, you can if you think, if you wanna get into you know, Forex trading, which is now currency ex exchange, that's where you can really, that's kind of investing, if you will. Um, but yeah, it, you know, money is just kind of this social construct. So that's how you can really think of it. And most of it is electronic. Now, the purpose of it, of course, is to facilitate the exchange of goods and services. So I think that's fairly clear. And another purpose is to exert goodwill through charity, influence, affluence, power, good or bad. Um, so there's there's other purposes of money outside of just facilitating the exchange of goods and services it's kind of, that's kind of first level and the second level is all the other things that are done with money uh, but we all use it multiple times a day but there's really no formal education provided provided for what is money which kind of makes this an interesting topic so the next thing we'll talk about we talk about what is wealth what is money and so let's talk about how we use money well if you get a dollar there's you know for every dollar you earn you can do three things you can consume it i.e. trade it out there and get goods or services for you know, that consumption. Uh, we can save it where we put it you know, away, think bank account type of saving. 10% uh, of saving used to be enough. Now 15% is kind of a better, better uh, version out there. Um, really you want to save till you have that three to six months of salary. That's the, in a safe place for your emergency fund. I think that you know that I think that's a, a lot, especially if you move up significantly in salary to have on hand, but it's up to you. Whatever you want to keep on hand is a, is a safety net, then certainly do so. And the last parts so we have, you can, you know, how do we use money? You can consume it, you can save it, or you can invest it. And again, uh, we've talked about the definition of investing and what we, you know, the difference between investing and gambling, but you can invest it. Now you can invest it through 401ks at work, through a savings plan if you're military. Everybody can do individual IRAs up to 6,000 a year now, 70, so, excuse me, 6,000 if you're under 50, 7,000 a year if you are um, 50 and older, or you can put it into real estate or you can start a business with it. So all of those are investing forms of money and that's really how we use it. But when you think about you know, building wealth over time, doesn't matter what you make, it's what you keep. So out of, you know, all the stuff that you consume goes away, but if you save or invest it, then that adds overall to your total wealth. So how do we make money? Well, when you think of it, it's, uh, you know, the first thing you do generally while you're in high school or maybe just out of high school is you get your first job and you go out there and you work for somebody and you're told what to do. You're told when to be there. You, maybe you get to agree on the shift or, you might have some you know, ability to affect that, but largely you're there and you're adding value to somebody else's enterprise. And when I talk to kids, I like to you know, <clears throat> say that when you go out and get your first job, you seem to be jealous of like the supervisor, right? 
So it's like, if I could just get to be that supervisor, then I'd be set, you know, they make a dollar two or an hour more than you do. And then, you know, if you move up to supervisor, then you kind of look at the shift manager and you go, Hey, if I could just get to shift, you know, be a shift manager, I'd be all set. And then same thing for the shift managers. They look up to the overall manager. It's like, if I could just get to be the general manager, then I would be set because all these positions make more money. And if you think about it from the entry level to supervisors, shift managers, managers, they all work for the owner of the business. And in some businesses, you never see the owner. Some, some you see the owner every day, especially if it's what a, you know, considered mom and pop firm or individual enterprise, then yeah, you're going to see the owner every day. But if you think of a larger organization, you might not ever see the owner ever. So it's kind of the, hey, if the owner makes more than everybody, wouldn't it be nice if there was a mechanism out there to be able to become part owner of an existing business without having to be the actual owner? Well, that's what's called the stock market, right? So when I'm explaining this to folks, it's you, you can start as entry level and you can work your way up the chain and then eventually own a business you know, when you're generally 40s or 50s, or you can skip all of that and go into business ownership uh, through the stock market. And again, that's what an individual share of stock is. It's part ownership, owner, excuse me, part ownership of the business. And it's a very small part because there's generally millions of shares out, but that's really what it is. You, be get, you get to skip all of that and become part owner or what most people do is do both, right? You work and you have your money working for you. So don't forget that, that, you know, that that's how, that's how you make money, and then that's how your money makes money. When we talk about the money making money, uh, you can talk about money in the bank. Uh, it does make money. However, at the current time, it does not make much. You could have 50000 in there, and at 0.1%, you'll get a little bit. But you won't get the same level that you will get of return and, you know, unless you invest. So savings, you can make a little bit, and you should have your emergency fund, of course, in in a safe place where it can't lose money and it will make a little bit of interest. But as far as when you think of, okay, after I have that in place and now I want my investing dollars out there. And again, by definition, the allocation of capital with the expectation of gain, but the potential for loss. So it's not risk-free like a bank account, but you put money into investments and the rule of 72, which we've talked about before, but if you get 7.2%, interest on your money, then your money will double every 10 years. Or if you get 10% on your money, your money doubles every 7.2 years and whatever combination of 72, you know, eight years and 9%, nine years, 8%, whatever you want to use. For your example, your money doubles fairly quickly. Uh, quickly in the big picture, not quickly as I can stare at it every day and it goes up, but quickly as in over the course of a few years, you can see a significant move up in your money making money. So now that we've kind of talked about the the aspect of money and you need to you need to make money and then you need to save some money for your emergency fund and then you need to invest some money where your money is actually making money let's come back to the concept of you know true wealth so we talked about that self-worth so that has to be unwaverable through all of it um, while you're going through this entire process of life slash wealth building you know making money and then wealth building on top of that and then secondly, of course, is that network has to be there for unwavering support. Uh, family, you don't have any choice over, but you kind of do have choice of who you expose yourself to within your family if, there's, there's, if everything is not perfectly in harmony with your family. And then, of course, your friend network, you need to be very selective of. And, you know, as your, your first circle of friends, again, you're going to slowly become them over time, right? So that, that's the, uh, you want to make sure you have that group squared away. And then your second circle of the folks that you know, provide your overall network, whether it's, uh, you know, for your health, the health group, spiritual group, uh, business group, uh, or just your hangout group that you enjoy being around. Uh, and then lastly is that ever increasing net worth. So you think over time, uh, you should be worth more every year. So that's what, I, that's what I will leave you with is to reduce stress in life, which there's going to be stressors because all of these things, you know, Life brings stress, but to not add on top of that some financial stress, you want to make sure that you're building more and more resources over time 
so that once you, you know, you can make it to the finish line, which a lot of people talk about as the making it through retirement, not to retirement, making it through retirement. So that requires you building up enough net worth over time that once you retire, that net worth now produces enough money or you can dip into it if you need to, to get all the way through to the actual finish line of the courses, you know, finishing your life and then hopefully with a little bit left over to pass on to your heirs. So that's what I have for you today. I hope that thinking through some of this stuff between the difference between money and the difference between wealth and net worth, all that kind of helps you clarify that in your mind to be able to reduce uh, stress. So please reach out through ototnow.com if you have any questions or comments. And thanks again for listening in. And here's to you fighting the good fight every day to be on time on target with your financial goals. Bye.